Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Uh, good evening. My name is John Green. I live at 4720 East Beach Drive, and I'm the president of the East Ocean View Civic League. I've been active with the Civic League for five years, uh, and this is my third year as president. I provided comments last year, and I wanted to add something again this year. I reviewed most of the 650 plus page budget, uh, but in truth, it's overwhelming. What was easier to read, of course, was the uh, city manager's 18 page budget summary, which included several points I'll address specifically. What it says on page two, for example, and again on the last page of the handout tonight, is that since 2011, the focus has been on making Norfolk America's heritage port city where people are transforming their neighborhoods, economy and culture into the most fun and livable waterfront community in the world. Two points about that, neighborhoods and waterfront. First, my neighborhood, East Ocean View, is alive and well and growing. East Ocean View continues to participate in and benefit from the city's Neighbors Building Neighborhoods program referenced in the budget. Our community specialist has helped us, helped us on any number of occasions to find the right office or personnel to deal with. Along those lines, we applaud the creation of and James Rogers' appointment as the Director of Neighborhood Development. James, in fact, came to a meeting in East Ocean View the day before, uh, for a meeting with uh, city code staff the day before his appointment was announced and was at our neighborhood cleanup this past Saturday the entire day. So too is our neighborhood codes inspector and Councilman Smeagle. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones, for this new department. It's a good move and we look forward to working with James and others on a number of ideas we have for grants and public-private partnerships, particularly for Bay Oaks Park, which remains unfunded. Thanks, too, before I forget to Sheriff Bob McCabe and his team of folks who picked, it, picked up 68 bags of trash on Saturday helping keep Norfolk beautiful. We also have developers coming to our Civic League meetings requesting approval before they begin building, and the city architect, Ron Moore, has taken a special interest in the plans the developers are putting forth so they reflect the character of the neighborhood. We look forward to working with him in the development and planning departments as other builders come forward with plans for our area. Uh, last, our definition of waterfront and someone who lives on the Lafayette River or downtown are probably different. But in our case, we will continue to stress how the city can and needs to do more to promote the eight miles of beachfront in Ocean View from Willoughby to East Beach as a family-friendly tourist destination. And now there's even a new kayak ramp for those to take advantage of the miles of kayaking along Pretty Lake. We're not asking for development along the lines of Virginia Beach. No one wants that. But if the city truly means what it says, about, market, making a reach, about marketing and regional approach to tourism. To us, this means hotels and restaurants, the number, the quality of those downtown to make this a tourist-friendly desti uh, destination. Uh, in sum, the necessary and growing focus of the city's neighborhoods and its multiple waterfronts will repay the city many times over. I hope you'll cap help us capitalize it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, Jane Bethel, followed by Richard Willard. Good evening, Mayor Frame, Vice Mayor Williams, City Council members, uh, and congratulations, Mayor Frame, on your re-election, and also uh, uh, Councilman Smeagle and um, Councilman Riddick. My name is Jane Bethel. I live at 7936 Merritt Street, Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, I'm here to speak on a number of things tonight. Uh, in speaking with residents, I have been greatly encouraged in their approval of my willingness to stand up for truth, justice, and ethical behaviors in Norfolk government. Sometimes even one person standing up for what is right uh, can inspire and encourage others to do likewise, and I hope that will be the case. If the city would put half as much effort into doing what is right as into looking uh, like they're doing what is right, then Norfolk could truly be an employer of choice. The city has created a consolidated pay plan for employees without input from those employees who were elected uh, to be the employee liaisons on matters affecting the compensation. This kind of non-inclusive government is one of the chief complaints 
I've heard from communities who are not in the loop on city plans for their neighborhoods. That is one reason I decided to try and make a difference by running for mayor. New disciplinary rules that make it a termination offense to interfere in personnel matters have been implemented which can contradict existing policies such as the anti-retaliation policy that encourage employees to feel free to report on the unethical behaviors, discrimination, and the like without fear of retaliation. There is no complaint process in the city, and when you terminate employees for making good faith complaints um, and reports of discrimination, workplace bullying, and other abuses, the city violates their own policies and wastes taxpayer dollars on reimbursed back pay and benefits. I ask you to uh, fund the senior tax relief program and fully fund Norfolk Public Schools, but especially 2% raises for teachers and fund a 2% raise for all public employees. <laughs> Stop ignoring the needs of Norfolk retirees. Uh, they have been passed over for too long. You need to commit to match the same cost of living increase to what other public retirees receive in the area. And I thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Richard Willard, followed by Dan Montague. Good evening. Hi, Richard. Mr. Jones, City Manager, City Council. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Willard. Uh, I live at 311 uh, West 35th Street, Norfolk, Virginia. I'm an 18 and a half year city employee, and I just want to come and um, thank City Council for the proposed uh, GWI raise for city employees this upcoming fiscal year. We want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for raising the cost of living standard up for city employees. Uh, it'll help us keep a lot of raw talent and a lot of employees, uh, keep them afloat in these hard economic times. We know the city has been, to, been through some hard economic times. And, and the city employees have endured along with the city of Norfolk. Uh, they've been faithful, they have endured, and they kept a, a high level of professionalism in spite of, you know, the lack of resources. Uh, so we, was, we want to thank you for this budget that, you know, is considering us uh, one of your most prized resources, the, the city employees of Norfolk. We want to thank you for considering for raises, and uh, we hope this is a trend that we're on the right track. Um, we want to thank you, because these raises go a long way we're keeping city employees afloat, we're keeping our kids in school, uh, keeping food on our tables, and you know everything is inflation is so everything is going up. And we just thank you for considering us that we can get raises that we can keep up with these hard economic times. And I, I know uh, things are tight, uh, not only for Norfolk but other municipalities. And um, we, we we think that uh, anybody getting money out of this budget should be uh, held fully accountable from this budget right here. So that's all I have, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Uh, Dan Montague, followed by Woodrow Moore. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council, Mr. Jones. Also, uh, congratulations on all you guys' victories yesterday. That was really impressive. I am here tonight because my name is Dan Montague. I live at 4605 Crick Street here in the city of Norfolk. I am here tonight because a year ago when you discontinued cit senior citizens and disabled tax relief program, you did not know it, but you raised my real estate taxes by 400%. Not 4%, but 400%. Now, how would you like your tax bill to jump 400%? Now, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, yeah. The thing about it is we seniors have earned everything that we get and then some. But this city has been run poorly in the past. Mr. Jones inherited a disaster. And the thing about it is he's made great strides and he's hired good people to bring it this far forward. And he's still got a big job ahead of him. But the thing about it is, I have told you down through the years all the problems that this city has, and a lot of times it falls on deaf ears. You guys sit up there and listen, 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 but you don't hear. And so therefore, I want the senior citizens tax relief to be reinstated. And a lot of seniors 
or on hard times because you took it away. One more thing too, I want ordinance 45488 repealed. That's, you charge me a fee to pay my taxes. The reason why I use a credit card is so I can keep up with what I have paid. And it's a lot easier for me. I, that way I don't have to look for 50 million receipts. The thing about it is I pay everything I can with a credit card and it's all on one piece of paper. And so therefore, this needs to be repealed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Woodrow Moore, followed by John Fox. Good evening, honorable mayor and city council members. My name is Woodrow W. Moore, Jr., and I reside at 2787 Tate Terrace, Norfolk, Virginia. I come before you to share my thoughts on growing and strengthening Norfolk, small women and minority-owned businesses. On page 224 of the budget book, it says that the Department of Development will promote and attract small women, veterans, and minority swam owned businesses and investments. How successful has this city been in reaching this goal? Since 2004, the city of Norfolk has participated in over one billion in major construction projects. That is a one billion with a capital B. These projects have brought the community light rail, state of our art schools, <clears throat> recreation facilities, libraries, public buildings, and safe drinking water. The question for the city council is did the city seize the opportunity to, to leverage these multi general investments for the purpose of growing small women and minority owned business? I know you know the answer, which is no. Most of the contractors and subcontractors of these projects came from out of town and they took the opportunity to grow our own businesses with them when they left town. We, do we have a strong community of small minority and women-owned businesses in Norfolk than in 2004? Again, I believe you know the answer, which is no. Let's not continue to miss out the opportunity to grow our small women minority-owned businesses. We are not asking for a handout, but an opportunity to participate and prosper for the revitalization, revitalization of the of this great city. I leave you, I leave each of you with a quote from the former United States Supreme Court Justice. Oliver Wendell Holmes. The great thing is, the great thing in this world is not so much where we are, but in what direction we are moving. Thank you for listening, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. John Fox, followed by Doug Beckman. Thank you. Distinguished council members, 
I'm sorry, distinguished council members, honorable mayor, thank you for hearing me tonight. My speech was gonna be a three topic speech, but um, the last three items are kind of mute on that. So I'm gonna stick to the elimination of the Route 16 by HRT. I work downtown Norfolk right across from City Hall at the Crown Center building. I take the 16 to the light rail Monday through Friday almost every day. I do not have to do that, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I have my own vehicle. I choose to use HRT because it's convenient for me and eliminates me going home during rush hour traffic. The 16 is just not for me. The 16 services a very needed neighborhood, Park Place. And whatever council member represents Park Place, if you do not fight for the 16, you're not doing your due diligence to your constituents. The 16 runs late. Is it the only bus that runs late through Park Place? The 4 and 11 stops at 6 p.m. at the earliest or at the latest. The 16 is a vital service to those people who live in Park Place. Those people depend on it going back and forth to work. Those people depend on it to go back and forth to their doctor's appointments. HRT had a meeting at the Park Place Center saying, oh, if we limit to 16, you're within a quarter or a half a mile of another bus stop, okay? My mother lives in Michigan and is 88 years old and has a double knee replacement. Would you want your 88-year-old mother walk a half a mile at nine o'clock at night through a neighborhood to get home if she was late back from a medical appointment? Do you want your own parents to walk on slick ice a half a mile to get to Hampton Boulevard or the Granby Street bus to get back and forth to work? This is a vital, vital, vital bus service for this neighborhood. You remove this bus service, you impact a lot of people. I have a choice. There are a lot of people in that Park Place neighborhood that do not, I repeat, that do not have a choice. Moving on to my second point. My second point, we're gonna be pay raises for firefighters and policemen, and I see you have a step pay raise for them. Congratulations, you're finally doing something right. You're taking care of your people, finally. But you've decided not to take care of the teachers. BS, okay? Our teachers, our teachers are in the trenches teaching our children every day. These people have the right to get a pay raise. You give them a 2% pay raise, but you raise their health insurance premiums 2%. What kind of pay raise is that? That is not a pay raise. So where do we find the money? I'll tell you where we find the money. If you want a new convention center, you want a new strip mall, you have the developer buy the property and build it on their own dime with no city tax money, period. End of discussion. Thank no you. city tax money for a convention center, no city tax money for a strip mall at Lake Wright, and no city tax mall for money for a new hotel on Granby Street. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you. Doug Beckman, followed by Francesca Carey, Uh, good evening. My name is Doug Beckman. I live at 722 Lesnar Avenue, uh, unit number 202. That's in Norfolk. I'd like to make a few comments about the Norfolk Animal Care and Adoption Center, which is our, munici uh, which is our, which is our municipal uh, animal shelter. Uh, every year we take in about 5,500 animals at our animal shelter. Each and, one of these, each and every one of these animals is dependent upon us for their care and ultimately for their lives. Uh, the animals at the shelter receive good care, but we would all like to see our live release rate, that is the number of animals we have a place, are able to place in permanent homes. We would all like to see our live release higher than what it is. In the last few years, it's been averaging around 55%. Um, there's a lot of data that shows a strong correlation between the capacity of a shelter and that shelter's live release rate. That data indicates that for Norfolk, with our current size shelter, Really about the best we can expect is a 61% live release rate. On the other hand, that data also shows that if Norfolk could find the wherewithal to fund a larger shelter, we can reasonably expect a live release rate of somewhere within the range of 69 to 86%. Um, so I therefore ask that we look at our five-year capital improvement program and see if there's some place within that five-year time interval where we can find the means to fund and construct a larger animal shelter in order to improve our live release rate. 
Um, there's a number of folks in the audience that uh, share or support um, a larger animal shelter. So if I may, I'd like those folks to please stand. Um, there's really two parts to every animal shelter. Thank you for coming down. Thanks. So go ahead. Yeah, there, there's uh, really two parts to every animal shelter's work. Uh, the first part is taking care of the animals while they're there. And, you know, Norfolk does an excellent job of that. They really, really do. The animals, while they're at the shelter, receive good care. The other half of every shelter's work is finding good permanent homes for the animals. And with a larger shelter and the staff and the resources to run it, we can increase the number of animals we're able to save every year. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Francesca Carey, followed by Mariana White. Good evening. My name is Francesca Carey. I live at 6235 Wellington Street in Norfolk. I volunteer at the Norfolk Animal Care Center. I'm here to explain why I believe the city of Norfolk should build a new shelter for its homeless animals. The best way to increase, an, increase adoptions is by increasing the visibility of the care center. As it stands now, patrons must know that Lowry Road turns into Saber Road from Military Highway or know that Rabby Road turns into Saber Road from Virginia Beach side. This is potentially confusing. In addition to this, there is the question of civic pride. In recent years, nearly every surrounding city has built a new shelter for its homeless animals, whereas the city of Norfolk shelter is still operating out of a former truck repair garage. The staff and volunteers at the Norfolk Animal Care Center has done a phenomenal job of creating an attractive and healthy environment for the animals as the resources they have will allow. I've heard many patrons co comment on how nice the animal care center is, but it's still a converted garage. The staff at the shelter are something for the city of Norfolk to be very proud of, but the building has more issues than a coat of paint and attractive enclosures can address. It simply was not built for housing animals. The air circulation system and drainage, water drainage are just a few of the critical needs that are not up to the levels of shelter requires. Incoming cats are currently housed in, housed in a formal mobile classroom that won't last for long. There really should be one building so animals won't need to be transferred from building to building in all kinds of weather. And then there's the parking situation. There, isn't enough parking there aren't enough parking spaces in the front of the cu for customers and rarely enough for staff or volunteers in the back of the building. Inadequate parking at the front of the building leads to concerns about safety for the public when they have to back their cars onto Sabre Road. The customer service area is too small to accommodate the many patrons that come to the facility for various things such as city pet licenses, adoption, and reclaiming lost pets. In conclusion, I believe the city of Norfolk should build a new animal shelter for these reasons and to instill increased civic pride in the North City's animal care center and create an optimum environment for the shelter's animals while it's in their care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mariana White, followed by Deborah Sims. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor Frame, members of the City Council, and Mr. Jones for allowing us to speak tonight. I'm Mariana White at 600 North Shore Road. Um, congratulations on your successful elections and re-elections. We look forward to a future which strengthens our city's community for all. Um, I have two main concerns this evening. Our schools are still feeling the effects of the cuts from the state. There have been many cuts to technology specialists, guidance counselors, deans, foreign language teachers, and media specialists, each of whom provide essential support for students to become part of a global society. We need to continue to rebuild a full curriculum and support staff for our students. The transformation plan will address some of these issues. We also ask you to support the 2% raise for teachers so that we can keep the excellent teachers we have in NPS. Beyond the bu budget discussion today, however, I also ask that the city work to raise the minimum wage for all workers in our community uh, perhaps not to 1025 for everyone, but at least to 875 for those working in small companies and to somewhere in the ballpark of 1025 for those working in the large companies that can afford to pay their workers more. Our families will be able to give their children more stability when all who work are living in a decent economic situation. 
Thank you for all your time and efforts as we work to build a healthy community for all. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Sims. Nate Kennison. Followed by Onicia Howard. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nate Kinnison of 1055 Hanover Avenue in Norfolk. Um, I, I wear many hats, but one that I've worn since uh, 2002 is that of elementary school teacher uh, through Hampton City Schools and Virginia Beach Public Schools. Um, I've taught for the Governor's School for the Arts, and I'm currently a master's student at Old Dominion University in educational administration. Um, I didn't plan on saying this tonight, but I have to say that you guys are up here catching a severe beatdown about your support of the schools. And what a lot of people don't understand is that while Virginia is 10th on the list of states that are able to actually pay for education, they are 47th on the list for states that are actually willing to pay for education. And it is entirely unfortunate that you are in the position of making up that difference based on the Virginia funding formula. So as many people as are here tonight need to be up in Richmond advocating for a change to that, which will take the burden off of you and give the money back to our school division. Um, in addition to that, I, I know that you all fund at a rate of greater than 100% what the state funds towards our educational budget. So I, I wanna say thank you because you are in support of Norfolk Public Schools. You do support the teachers just like you support everybody else. And I think when you understand that, it's incredibly important to understand that. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, when I saw the school board's proposed budget for 2015 um, was unveiled, I saw one statement in there, and that was that the Norfolk Public Schools has the highest per pupil expenditure of any uh, division in the region. And that's true, um, according to the superintendent's annual report for uh, Virginia which is just the big conglomerate of data from every locality throughout the state. Uh, so I read the report and I compared numbers on that, um, on, on our budget versus numbers in the report and looked at Newport News, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, and found out that Norfolk has the lowest pupil to teacher ratio of any division locally. They also have the greatest percentage of the instructional budget spent on instructional staff. We have a reasonable ratio of administrators to teachers congruent with everybody else. We pay principals and assistant principals appropriately, significantly more than other divisions in our locality, but we consistently pay teachers between three and $6,000 less than the other localities. And this kind of uh, contributes to the attrition rate of our, of our educators locally. Um, you know, research shows that the number one factor in student achievement is teacher quality. It's undisputed. The research shows that secondary is poverty, believe it or not. The principal's job is to support, develop, empower good teachers um, and acquire good teachers. And it's impossible to recruit for the division when we have low test scores to start with and then lower pay. It's really difficult for somebody in a great position as a principal to say, please come join my team. I'm gonna pay you less. Kids aren't doing as well, but it, it, so it's difficult. Two more points and then I'm finished, and thank you for your time. Uh, Dr. King also spoke this evening about advancing a plan for focused instructional professional development. The National School Board uh, Foundation calls investment in teacher learning the primary policy lever in raising student achievement. It's supported by a 2007 study that says teachers who engage in 14 and beyond hours of professional development can consistently improve their student percentage points by 21% or greater. In, in achievement goals. Um, uh, Norfolk's a thriving city with a rich history. It's a fantastic school division. I'm, I'm proud to be a product of. I'm proud to see my own children through. I have three, one on the way, lots of kids in the family, and I, I encourage you to find the money, however we have to do it. Uh, you're already supporting the school division to a great degree, and I appreciate it, but we really, really need to be able to attract quality teachers. The research shows it affects student achievement, that it is the number one concern with student achievement. We have to, uh, to attract these teachers, and we can start with a bit of better pay or an equal level of pay. Uh, thank you for both your time this evening, but more importantly, for your service and your continued support of Norfolk Public Schools. Thank you. It's Howard, Anishia Howard, followed by Shira Knight.
Good evening, Mayor Frame and council members. My name is Anicia Howard. I reside at 2137 Kimball Circle and I'm an employee of the city of Norfolk. I stand before you to say that I'm feeling very encouraged about the fiscal year 15 budget. In particular, the creation of the Department of Neighborhood Development as I believe this truly advances the city's priority of safe, healthy, inclusive neighborhoods. I also think that this serves to maximize resources and give more attention and support to all of Norfolk's neighborhoods. Secondly are the armed initiatives that include a living wage increase for all permanent employees as well as a 2% general wage increase for all general employees. Third is the lifelong learning priority and the focus on partnering with other agencies and organizations for initiatives like United for Children. I hope that these budget components are approved by council and remain in the budget as they work towards making Norfolk a more resilient city and a city of choice. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Knight, Sharon Knight, followed by Deborah Sims. First of all, I give praise and honor. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. City um, Mayor Frame, Mr. Jones, Mr. Excuse me, I have a hard time. How's your name, sir? So, Mr. Andy. We all do. Okay. Councilman, <laughs> Mr. Ritter, how you doing, sir? First of all, I'd like to say early happy Mother Day to all the ladies, late happy Father Day to the gentlemen. I want to say um, I resigned at 831 Banker Row off of Lookery at Tower Drive. Uh, first of all, I want to say um, I'm, a, I'm on the survey team with Hampton Roads Transit. I've been doing this for ever since 1993, working with the buses and the supervisors and the city um, CEO, Mr. Harold, Harold um, Williams. I also been talking to special assistant, Mr. Rogers, James Rogers, and um, public relations, Ms. Lori Crouch. You might know who she is. Also, I've been uh, taking surveys on different bus routes, as you can see right here. And um, I am not, I'm not guard, I'm not a security guard, but Mr. Ms. Andy, I want to say excellent work on Ever-T Butts. The last time I spoke to the mean, we were talking about Ever-T Butts over there by Lookery. Excellent job, sir. It's much quieter. There's no crime. There's not people there. It's clean. Also, I want to say about Military Circle. That is astonished. The area, the platforms, all the chairs, and especially all the cameras in the, in the telegram poles and Duffy Lanes too also. I am the eyes and ears with Hampton Roads Transit. Some people don't acknowledge, but God does too also. But I have been keeping tabs on all the routes. Here are my notes. When I get a chance to talk to Mr. Harrell, anything that happened with Hampton Roads Transit, I'm on it 24-7. I dedicate myself to it. All I say is, congratulations, Mr. Frame. Keep doing a good job, sir. Thank you. Mr. Jones, you too, and Mr. Andy, you too also, and Mr. Riddick. Trust me. And also, to the area out um, Huntersville, yes, it looks a lot better than it did before. Also this, um, all I say is this. All the notes that I have, whenever I turn it to Mr. Harrell, I do call them. I have their numbers here. For Hampton Roads Transit, this is to Mr. Um, Raymond Ruzzo, the chief planner, Mr. Um, Harold, William Harold, the CEO, Mr. Pete Knich, um, I can't pronounce his name, he's the superintendent, the general superintendent, Mr. Bobby Edwards. I speak on them. Some, that, you're doing fine. Take your time. I apologize. Okay. Anyway, um, the Wood Street area is awesome. The security guards are there 24-7. There's no crime, there's no shooting crap on the ground, drinking beer, the officer there to take care of the passengers, so am I. I dedicate myself, I'm not God, I'm not a security guard, but I'm a, I'm a city taxpaying person, and I also, I'm gonna keep doing, I've been doing this, I also volunteer for the Homeless Connect. I'm trying to ask somebody for help to do something for the homeless. I once was homeless six years ago, but God turned that around. Also, with y'all helping encourage me, 
I thank y'all very well. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing for Hampton Road Treasures, and y'all keep doing an excellent job. And I leave this note is, do unto others God's golden rules. Do unto others as you have under to do unto you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. you. Too. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Sims. Okay. Okay. That's all the names that I have up here. Pardon me? Sure. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to? You, didn't you, did you speak? Okay, okay. Go ahead. Thank Mayor Frame and honorable city council members, yes, thank you to your commitment for your commitment and your continued service to our city's residents. Um, and a special thanks to Mrs. Green for her service to Ward 3 and to best wishes to Ms. Mamie Johnson as she serves Ward 3 in our future. My name is Vicki Greco. I live at 1433 Brunswick Avenue, 23508. I'm a 47-year resident of Norfolk. I can't call myself a native. I'm a baby, a Navy baby who was born in Pensacola, but I moved here with my p immigrant parents uh, to Norfolk, and we call it home. Um, I'm also a Lake Taylor High School grad, a UVA grad, an ODU grad, and an MPS parent, volunteer, and former employee. At the risk of stating the obvious, we do live in a military town. We don't live in a port of call. We live in a college town, a small and Fortune 500 town, and we live in an education town. All residents of Norfolk, whether they recognize it or not, are NPS stakeholders. We are all dependent on the success of our schools and our children. We all share a vested interest in the strength and success of our schools. Public schools are the community centers and anchors of strong neighborhoods. They affect property values, the quality of life in our neighborhoods, and our homegrown job-creating businesses. They help us to retain families, especially those military retirees and families and international families that come back and call Norfolk home. I am one of seven children raised by my Filipino parents in Norfolk. I am the only child of Francisco and Lourdes Menugo who still chooses to live in Norfolk and send my children to Norfolk Public Schools. My six siblings all live in the surrounding suburban areas and they educated their children in those well-funded public school systems. I know you all are doing your best to fund our schools, but I believe that the city can do better I think our city can not only be the most fun or livable waterfront city, I believe Norfolk can be the smart and progressive seaside town I know it can be. With hipsters and families, sailors and business people, teachers and other important public servants who all can work together. Election year or not, we can all make public education and the residents served by our schools understand the priority that our schools need. Thank you very much for your service to our city, our children, and our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Karina Rosniak. Okay. My name's Karin. Okay. My name is Corinda Rosniak. Um, I've stated my address before, but it's 815 Pecan Point Road in Norfolk. Um, I currently work at the Independent Center, which is a nonprofit um, in Norfolk, and I'm here today to update the council on the services provided by the Independent Center to Norfolk residents with disabilities and their families. As a Center for Independent Living, our core services are information and referral advocacy, peer mentoring, and independent living skills. Peer mentoring is provided by an employee with a disability with the idea that shared experiences are the best guide to independence. Independent living, living skills training is aimed to teach skills necessary for living independently. In the physical year of 2012 to 2013, 
1,791 individuals were served through disability information and referrals. In addition, we also had 235 new individuals coming looking for continued services, which was um, in addition to our uh, individuals that we had before, so that totaled 324 who reside in Norfolk. In the last six months, we've um, had 90 new individuals who have received peer mentoring and independent living skills trainings. In terms of services for people who reside in Norfolk, 78 people have received housing information, 201 have received information related to advocacy, 83 people got transportation services in the city, and 107 received peer mentoring. Last physical year, six individuals were able to successfully transition from nursing facilities in Norfolk to live independently. This is important because a lot of um, individuals who live in nursing facilities are sometimes younger people who become injured and they are there for rehab and then have nowhere else to go. Um, so that's actually what I do. So last year we've, we were able to transition six people and in the six months of this physical year we've already done four. Um, being the only center for independent living in Southampton Road, Roads, our goal is to open doors for individuals with disabilities to have the same opportunities as those around them. The information provided above demonstrates the utilization of our services and we as a center work to achieve that. We are grateful for the support you've already provided to us in the past and we ask for your continued support as we'd like to care and we'd like to carry on this partnership with you because it is crucial for us to be able to continue our services with them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this concludes the public hearing. Uh, thanks to all of you for coming out. Thank you for staying. Uh, the council will meet next week to discuss what we've heard here and what our own thoughts are about the budget. And then I think the following week we're scheduled to vote on it. So again, thank you very much.